Hi there Fabric Jugglers, it's Babs here from Fiery Phoenix and today I'm going to be taking you through uh, creating your own memory cushion. Uh, not memory cushion, but memory cushion cover. Um, this is something that seems to have been quite popular at the moment. It's something I've had seen a lot of requests um, about and it really is the simplest of patterns um, for, for you to create yourself. Uh, the complicated part is having a patch made up. Um, now, we actually sell these patches, um, so I'll put a link um, below to, sit to to the shop, so you can have your own embroidered message on here. Of course, if you didn't want to pay out for a patch, and these are about four inch squares, um, then you could hand embroider something yourself, or you could get a fabric marker and write it on a, on a plain patch of fabric. Um, but what I'll do is I will show you how to take either a patch that you've created yourself or a patch that you bought from somewhere and how you attach that to a shirt to create um, the, the memory cushion so that it's either the shirt of, of, of um, a parent for a child that's going away to college, to a, a camp for the first time or it could be a memory of um, a, a lost loved one. But either way, um, this is, as I say, a very, very simple, very fast process. Um, and I'll take you through it from beginning to end. So let's get sewing. What you're going to need to actually make this cushion um, cover is an insert for the, um, the cushion itself. You're going to need, as I say, the patch, which you've either handwritten or hand embroidered or picked up from... Um, somebody who does machinery embroidery. Um, you need um, an existing shirt. We're going to be using scissors, a, a rotary cutter. If you don't have a rotary cutter, just stick with the scissors, that's fine. And um, I always keep a seam ripper on hand. Because we're working with a shirt, it might be easier to, to pull it apart using the ripper, but hopefully we won't need it. And obviously, um, I always have a, a stash of pins around the place. So the first thing we're going to do is measure our cushion. I'm not going to be adding on extras for seam allowance when I measure this. I am simply going to see how large it is. We want it to be a snug fit, so I don't put any extra seam allowance so that there is a, a bit of um, a bit of cuddle to it. It looks like it's, it's something that wants a cuddle rather than something that's lost weight and none of its clothes fit. So we'll just measure this out and with my, it's just a very rough indication. This is 14 inches and it's going to be square. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, so it's 14 inches by 14 inches. So we can pop this to one side for now. And what I need to do is make sure that the shirt is buttoned up and I'm going to then mark out roughly where 14 inches would fall. Um, it, if it makes it easier for you, you can cut away the sleeves. Um, I've got a, a tutorial, this takes a hanger out, that would actually make my life much easier. Um, I have a tutorial on how to reclaim as much fabric as possible from a shirt. Now whilst using that method on this particular shirt isn't going to be very helpful, um, if you want to reuse as much of the cut off as possible then um, the instructions in that, that video are, are going to be very helpful. So I'll, I'll put a link to that as well. Um, there is a written um, tutorial for this process so if my going um every couple of minutes is getting a little bit irritating there's a link to that in the description and you can uh, you can follow along at home at your own pace of course you can always pause the video at any stage to um, to follow along at home so I've opened this out flattened it off made sure the buttons are done up um, now what I'm going to do is just insert the infill into the tummy of the shirt so you can get an idea of, of what this is going to look like. Um, the point of it being that we have the buttons running down the front and then we're going to have sewn on a patch to the side. Now it's down to you whether you put that on at an angle or if you shape it differently into a heart or, or whatever you like but this is um, a, a patch that you can decide to position yourself. But what we're trying to do is keep this run of buttons central. Um, you can keep the collar, I'm not going to because this one 
isn't very pleasant looking, but you can keep the collar by simply sewing across the top, and I'll put some instructions to do that in the um, in the tutorial, in the written tutorial that is. Um, so that's an alternative, so you can leave the, um, the collar at the top of the shirt, uh, but if you don't want the collar, and this is going to be a very simple tutorial, so we'll leave the collar out of it for now, um, and just have the buttons down the front with the patch on the side. So what we need to do is remove the cushion and pin the front of the fabric to the back of the fabric, uh, just to keep it steady while we measure and cut. So as you can see, I've got the shirt the right side out for the time being. I've put four pins in and I'm just simply going to cut across, not cut across, but uh, measure across to make sure I've got the 14 inches that I require, uh, which, I, which I do quite happily. Uh, so what I'm going to do is line up the seven inch mark, which is obviously half of my 14, and I shall put that halfway through this strip of button so that I know that that is centered. And that is the point that I will use to, to find the width of the, of the fabric. Um, so we've got that lined up. The seven is lined up on the buttons. And I haven't got my pen, so bear with me one second. So I have my tailor's chalk and I am lining this up with the seven inch mark on the button, on the center of the button line, so that I can mark off the 14 inch line and the zero line. That's very helpful because that's actually on one of the stripes which makes it very easy for me to find and this one is halfway between the two. Um, now I want to measure up 14 inches from, it doesn't really matter where, but I, I want to try and centre it so that the top of the line is halfway between two buttons and the bottom of the line is partway between two buttons. Um, that way I'm not going to try and sew through a button as I'm encasing or enclosing the ends. So that's one end, we have the top, and I can just draw a line straight across the centre of the shirt, or straight across the middle of the shirt, to show where that 14 inches falls. And then the same with the top. And I have to make sure that that 14 inches is not actually going across the sleeve. If it goes across the sleeve, then I need to rethink my sizing. But uh, I'm, I'm well clear with that, so that's not actually a concern. And then I have the side that I need to just draw in. And then the other side to draw in. And what I'm going to be doing is cutting this very roughly with my scissors and then I will turn it inside out and cut it neatly with my rotary cutter. But just for now, I'm going to sort of hack away around the edge, which in terms of um, saving fabric is not the best option, but I'm just gonna give myself about an inch away from each of those lines. Right, so what I've done is cut the square out of the, the shirt and as I say, we can reuse this, this fabric, so we can recover this um, and use that in a future project, which leaves me with two squares of fabric. Now, as I say, I did this very roughly with the scissors, and what I'm gonna do now is neaten it all up using my rotary cutter. Um, so I'll be using my steel rule for this. If you have um, a quilter's plastic rule, then that would be perfect. Um, I don't have one of those, it's on my uh, wish list. I keep, um, I keep promising myself that I'll buy it and then I get suckered into buying more fabric instead. So um, I, will, I will work on that. Um, if anybody's got any recommendations for quilting rulers, um, what they think I should get, please pop that in the comments below. I'd be very interested to, um, to hear your, your feedback on that. Okay, so we're simply going to slice away neatly now the, um, the edges. I'll do the two sides first and then I will do the top and bottom. And one of the things that you might need to take into consideration is the yoke on the back of the shirt. Now, my yoke is above uh, my top line, but if you've got a fancy yoke that sort of comes down and, and, um, and is, a, is a more attractive decorative feature, then you might need to take that into account to either include it or exclude it. 
um, but definitely make sure that that's something you've thought about and you're not just sort of stuck with whatever's happened. Um, so make sure that that becomes design, a design decision for you. Uh, so then we'll, we'll just do the this side. Always remember to, um, to close up your rotary cutter in between using it. Um, it should become almost um, a default action without having to think about it too much. The last thing you want to do is reach for a rotary cutter that is um, that's open. You will um, certainly feel that in your fingertips very quickly. And then we will simply make sure that it's all laying flat. And I'm going to stand up for this one because I've got the uh, the plackets to get through on the front of the um, the shirt. So bear with me a minute while I stand up and cut this. For this next section, what we're going to be doing is preparing the patch. So for this, we will need to have our craft scissors, not our sewing scissors. We've got our fusible, um, our fusible paper, so your, your heat and bond or, or the equivalent. Um, I'll have links to, to all the supplies that you need um, in the description below. And, um, and obviously the patch itself. We've got the shirt cutting, um, so that we can decide on the size and, um, and placement before we, we adhere it using the, the fix and bond. But what we're going to do first is, is open it up. So if you order this from, from Fire and Phoenix, then you'll receive it in one of these little packs. And, um, and you'll find that it is, it's, it's always going to be on 100% cotton, so it's always going to be quality, quality that's sent out. But we can decide how large or how small to make it. And we can also then decide on, or rather you can decide on how you want to attach it. Now in the written tutorial I've shown instructions both to leave it with a raggy edge and also to um, use satin stitch to, to sew around. What I'm going to do is use satin stitch to sew around with a neat edge um, because that's my personal preference. Um, but obviously it's entirely up to you which of those options you go for. Um, so to start off with I'm going to... This, I think this is four inches, but that's slightly large. So what I'm going to do is trim that down just a smidgen um, so that it comes out just the size that I'm looking for. Now, because I'm going to be um, poking my eye, apparently, but because I'm going to be uh, using satin stitch, I'm going to continue using the red um the red chalk because that's going to be covered over on the front of the fabric and so I'm looking at the amount of space that I've left here and that's probably quite close bearing in mind that I'm going to be using a satin stitch to to adhere it all together so I just need to make sure that I'm keeping something similar but a little bit further away on this side the reason I say a little bit further away is that on this side I'll be sewing down from this angle, this side will be sewing down from this angle. So when they're, they're both cut out, it will, it will even up. So I just need to, to check how wide that is. So that's five and a quarter inches. So we just need to, to make sure this is five and a quarter, and it isn't. So it obviously won't be a full square. So you can make it a long, a long shape or a short shape. Uh, you can make it a rectangle. If you want to force a square, then you'll need to find out the width and then have a height that matches. Um, but I don't want that. I'm quite happy to have a little shape with the same amount of border all the way around. So that's going to be what I'm cutting out. So I'll just get that quickly trimmed up. There we are. Making care not to chop off my fingers in the process. Now all of our um, embroidery patches have backing on them because we use that to stabilise as the embroidery is put on pla in place. But that won't help you stick it to your shirt unfortunately, which is why we need to use a heat and bond. So this is the, the trimmed up patch, that's what it looks like on the reverse. And what we're going to do is just position this to make sure that we're happy. Um, 
it fits it fits in I've got space for um, a, um, a seam allowance or I could put it on a slight angle and tuck it away underneath here um, I quite like it on the angle to be fair um, I don't like things being absolutely rigid and when you're working with the stripes um, that really does become quite tricky because if you're going for right angles you have to get them correct otherwise they just scream out to the eye whereas if you're going on an angle then um, then that fits quite nicely um, and it's not so obvious that you're off off kilter because it's obviously meant to be off kilter so uh, I'll undo this button so we can see how far I've got to play with to tuck that under and we've actually got quite a good distance um, We've actually got quite a good distance to come across and we need to be aware that that button's there so we don't want it to be snug right up snuggled right up close because we won't be able to stitch around the button um, and also it'll cover any of the text so if we pop it here put that back so we can see that it's it's visible I do quite like that um, I like that on the angle so what I'm going to do is just just put a corner mark here corner mark here Pull them up down here, just to give me an idea of what I'm aiming for. When I uh, when I put that back back on the shirt, it's it's going to need to cover all four of those marks, and any slight difference won't matter too much if I if I deviate too far from that. As long as those four marks are covered up, I'm sorted. So we can now put this to one side and cut out. And this is why we need our craft scissors. Cut out some of this heat and bond that will actually match the square. Um, don't waste um, the heat and bond. So there's no point cutting out oodles when you really don't need it. You just need to have enough to go around and you end up with some quite strange shapes depending on what applique you're doing, if they're letters or shapes or animals. You can end up with quite odd bits of unused, or you think unusable pieces of heat and bond, but I always keep them together because inevitably there will be something that will fit into that kind of a shape. So we have this, and we'll be attaching it onto the back of the applique. So I'm just going to go grab my iron, and aeroplanes are going overhead again. Um, now what you can do is actually remove this backing. Um, just peel away the excess because it's not going to help if the heat and bond adheres to this backing and then the backing comes away because it's not intended to hold everything together it's just there for stabilization just tear away the excess so that we've got as much of the actual fabric adhering to the heat and bond as possible and um, that's a, a very good tip to just keep in mind if you ever have any embroidery done from anywhere else um, so we'll move that out of the way now the back of it looks like that we have the front of it it feels much more like fabric and i'm just going to go and press this on and then and then i'll press it onto here so i'll be back in a minute so here we are into the final stretch with the patch adhered on and i'm just going to take off these little tags and uh, we don't want them showing through with our um, satin stitch so we'll just just trim those away clear them out make this as, as sharp and neat as we can we can pull these away at the end but I'd rather just clear them off now um, makes more sense to do it before the satin stitch goes in okay so there we have our smart looking little patch and what we're going to do is obviously we need to take these apart now so that we can uh, sew on this patch and then we're going to be putting everything back together inside out because we are really just satin stitch around the edge and then seam allowance around the edge away from completing this it really is a very very fast process uh, once you've made some uh, simple decisions so we'll pop those to one side for now and we're going to set up the sewing machine for a satin stitch so we're going to set this on a medium-sized um, zigzag 
and we're going to have a stitch length that is down to one. I want this nice tight, actually less than one. I want it on the, um, let's see if we can see that a bit better. I want a stitch length set to within this whole buttonhole area because buttonholes use a nice satin stitch format. So I'm just going to run through a test using some of my cut off fabric, which will then become my sewing spider afterwards. So to start us off, we'll just try out a little bit of this satin stitch to make sure we like the way it looks. Oh, and what I've done here is a very foolish thing, which almost was very dangerous and broke my needle. I've left on a piecing foot, and that piecing foot does not have the width in the base plate that you need for a zigzag. So bear with me while I uh, correct that very silly mistake. So here we are back with our regular presser foot and just going to test out this satin stitch. Now I'm not quite happy with that, that distance. I think I prefer it to be just a smidgen tighter. So I'm going to drop my stitch length down a little bit further. I'm going to make it a smidge wider as well. So we'll move on and see how that progresses. There we go. Nice slow stitch. And that's a much nicer satin effect than this first one. So we'll work with this one and I'm now going to use this as my sewing spider to start us off, or at least I will when I come to working the main piece. Right now, I'll just pull that through somewhat. And I'm not going to start at the corner, I'm going to start part way down one edge. And I'm not going to start on the top edge because it will be incredibly obvious if I've made a mistake on that. So I'm actually going to start down here. Um, where this is going to be hidden. So where this is actually going to be away. And what I'm going to do is center the stitch down the center of the foot so that the stitch should evenly go across the, um, the edges and then hold that all in place. So keeping a firm grip on this to start us off, this tail. And then we'll sew the Now you're not going to want to sit there and watch me do the whole process, but I will show you how I turn the corner. I stitch right up to the edge and then I leave I leave the, um, the needle down on the far right um, position, lift it up, pivot round and then I try to align this. It's going to be slightly wonky to begin with, but I align this so that it's going to be coming down this line. Um, and you can see the lovely satin stitches that we have here. And what I do is having done that pivot from the outer point, I just manually step it through one stitch and then I can align it more centrally. And then you'll get a double crossover at the corner and then you'll be back to straight Never leave um, the needle in the up position if you want to look at your fabric or check what your work is looking like. But here you can see that we've got a really nice double layered corner and the satin stitch is still progressing quite evenly. Uh, so what I'll do is continue on round and I'll show you how to finish off the cushion. So as you can see we're now getting quite close but the press of foot edge is right next to the letter however the stitch is at least another quarter of an inch inside the edge of the press of foot so we know that we're going to be safe and we're not going to actually be overrunning into this as we continue on down and finish this run of uh, of satin stitch.
I always overlap just a tiny bit between the first round and the second run so that it makes it a much smoother edge. We shouldn't have to worry too much about how smooth that connection is because it's actually hidden underneath the, the button placket. So if we, we put that back, you'll see that that actually is going to sort of peek out from underneath. So I'm just going to trim this up and then get everything aligned, ready to turn it inside out and then sew the final edging. So here we are with the front piece all buttoned up with the, uh, the patch panel just peeking out the edge. I quite like the way that that looks as against being dead square in the centre. I think that gives it a nice little informal look. Um, so what we're going to do now is put this inside out. And again, as you can see, it's just as neat on the inside as it is on the front. Because I like work to be neat on the inside and on the outside. Now I just need to remember which way round is the outside because we want the two outsides together. So right sides facing. Now if possible, although I am going to be a little bit OTT if I try and do this, you want to have the, um, the lines in the fabric matching between the front and the back. However, that isn't possible because I wasn't that careful when I cut it out. Um, I need to, oh, it's pretty close though. That's pretty close. I might be able to manage it, but I don't think I'll bother trying. Um, it's, it's close, but not that close because I didn't make the effort when I folded the two fabrics back to back to begin with. So what we're going to do now is just pop a few pins in to hold this all in place, particularly along the placket. Because whilst the sides will stay as they are, where we've got the buttons, this could come apart and that would deform the shape of the uh, of the cushion and we don't really want that. We want it to try and maintain its, um, its structure. Pop a couple more in. Try not to stab myself as I go. At the top. Up. And pop some more pins in to hold it in place. Now what I'm going to do is sew down the sides first because there's no room for, for error down the side, they have to fit. Um, so I will start at the side and then I will sew across the top and what I'm going to do is where we have the, the button opening I'm going to back stitch across that so I'll come forward back stitch and forward so there'll be three rows of stitching across this particular point um, and that will hopefully keep its strength when the um, when the cushion cover is then turned right side out now what I'm going to do is just run along the edge using my presser foot as a guide. So I need to reset my stitches to, um, I'm gonna run at two and a half with a centre stitch. And this is where I'm actually going to take my sewing spider just to make sure that I don't have any, any grots and grollies caught up when I start. And we'll be running this through along the presser edge. regular straight stitch um, and we use the edge of the presser foot so that we've got a, um, a consistent seam allowance. And I'm going to stop about a foot's width distance from the edge, leave the needle in the down position and then pivot round so that I can continue on. Now if I'm slightly wider then a foot's distance, that's not really going to kill anybody um, and I'll just even it out as I come away from that corner. One of the um, beautiful things about cushion covers is that the cushion will take the form um, so it will force the shape that you want. It doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle. It's not quite the same as when we're quilting and we have to have that, that precise level of detail. And now we're coming up to the placket here. So we need to do some reverse stitching at this point. So just feel your way through. So it starts here, 
finishes here so I'm going to reverse stitch across this section. You can feel when you've left the edge. And one more stitch and that's taken me out of the placket area. So let's just adjust this slightly. We'll just do the reverse now. Again, you can feel when you come out the other side and then work your way back again. And then as we come back around, make sure we haven't got any lumps or bumps. If we've been paying attention to the fabric as we've been working it, this should be a nice smooth exit. Which in this case, it is. We can pop the sewing machine out of the way now. Make sure we haven't got any pins left in the, um, in the case, which we don't. And then trim across the corners, which will also release the, the sewing spider there. So we just trim the bulk away from the corners. Now, unlike normal pillow casings, we haven't needed to leave any gaps for turning, um, which is why this is such a fast and easy tutorial. Uh, what we now do is undo the buttons on the shirt and turn the shirt the right way out. We can undo all of them or we can just undo a couple. Uh, I think you'll find when it comes to inserting the, the cushion itself, it will probably be worth leaving a couple of the buttons done up so that um, it gives a bit more strength and structure so we're not pulling too much at the join where we had the placket being sewn back and forth. I'll just turn this right side out. And again, this is such a fast and easy make. It looks incredibly impressive when it's finished, um, but it is a true beginner's make. Anyone can create these. It's more about knowing where or how to get the patches. So here we are with it turned out for the very first time. And we'll now pop the cushion insert in. This hopefully will be where it starts to come alive. Now if you need to press it, do so. Squidging it all in. And as you can see, this is the reason I left that button in because the amount of pressure on here will be quite high and we don't actually want to risk ripping out any of those stitches. I'll just tuck it back through. Oops, I'm nudging the camera there. Sorry about that. Even that out. And we have ourselves a nice, definitely very cuddly cushion cover from a shirt. And there we go. So here we have the cushion in question. You can see we've got the lovely patch which has been appliqued on very smoothly um, and it does look like it's just waiting for a cuddle. It looks like a nice tubby tummy on the um, on the cushion itself. So hopefully this has given you some inspiration to go ahead and create one for yourself. Um, if you are interested in ordering one of the patches, we do sell the patches. You can have them made with your own wording completely. Um, totally customised or we can just change it so it says a shirt or a jumper um, or um, mum, dad, grandma, nanny, pops, whatever it is that you, you want to have on here we can we can customise those for you um, or of course you can use a fabric pen, you can um, embroider, hand embroider your own, the, the, the options are just limitless out there for you. Um, this is a very basic one which is what I've seen, um, so many people asking how to make these um, I would suggest if you wanted to fancy it up a bit, you could put on some piping. I've got a tutorial that shows you how to make your own piping and also how to apply that piping to a cushion. So I'll put a link to that in as well. And if it was for a lady's garment or shirt or jumper or whatever it is, dressing gown, that you're using to make one of these cushions, then you could, you could fancy that up with some lace or some frills or some ruching. Um, again, 
use your imagination. There's, there are so many ways of, of doing that. If you still feel that this is slightly beyond you, um, although I promise you it really, really isn't, then um, get in touch and we can make some for you. Um, send us through your, your garments and um, and we can we can get them made. But um, I think you'll find far more satisfaction from making these yourself. Um, hopefully this has inspired you to do just that. And uh, so please share this around with your friends, family, whoever you think might actually benefit from, uh, from learning this. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for liking, commenting hopefully with some sample photos and subscribing to the channel. See you later. Bye.